Hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here. Now whenever we last left off, Midoriya he has went to Uda and gotten his mask created. The new one. Uda was able to make it out of well, things he had lying around. In fact, he was actually able to scrap a mask that he messed up. He repaired it, and actually just added a few new things onto it. The stitching, it should be fine, and in fact just coloring it, you wouldn't even notice it was there. Along with at least adding the two things on the neck. And sewing on the eye patch, giving Midoriya his brand new mask. The next day, Midoriya, he woke up. And, well, his mom did want to talk with him. And understand exactly what happened to him. Giving him time would be good. But at the same time, he just seems to be... There's not really a right word for it but she can't put her fingers on it. Midoriya knows something that she doesn't. And she wants to understand it. Trying to figure out what is wrong with her son. Sitting down at the table and eating her breakfast. Asking him if he is going to be joining her. To which Midoriya walks over and picks up the meal. Eating it with his bare hands. Her just telling him to sit down, and to use a fork. Noria not really listening. As he finishes his food, then washes his hands, and his mouth, getting the blood off of them. Then telling his mom that he's leaving. He'll be back later. Her trying to stop him, and talk with her damn son. Telling him that what he's been through is very traumatic. She's been through some instances in her past, and she did get over them. In fact, she does want to understand how and why. Why didn't he let anyone know what happened? He wouldn't have been abducted, right? Noria not saying a word before he just moves past her, overpowering her in physical strength, and moving her out of the way. However, she does actually... well... she wants to retaliate and lash out. However, Midoriya... well... if she does get violent with him, then she might not win. Especially since the way he's acting now. He doesn't seem to be, well, remorseful. Anything she's tried to teach him to be. He's showing everything. How cunning he is, how smart he is, how tactical he can be. He's not even trying to talk to anyone anymore. Something she's told him to do and use first. His skill at manipulating people through speech. And persuasion. Now, Midoriya picks up his mask from Uta, then leaving. Over the next few days, Midoriya is gathering information, along with talking back and forth between Bakugo and Momo, who are in the same class. Now, with that being said, throughout these few days, Midoriya does get a little bit of information. Along with it being announced that the eye patch ghoul, as some people nicknamed him, has been killing more ghouls, himself going on a war path, and the CCG needs to give a statement. Them saying that they are going to catch this ghoul, and bring him in for further questioning. Since the warpath in question 
might have something to do with the disappearance of the three-eyed ghoul. Information is still unknown, along with the alleged reports of a ghoul being involved with the Ayama death. The manor burned down. We did find evidence, however, in the basement of ghouls. But just because of that doesn't mean that they themselves could have been. It is still a possibility. And we still do need to question Mr. Yayarozu, who was out of town at this time of disappearance. Now, with that being said, that does put people a bit off. As Midoriya, he's sitting down and enjoying a bit of food, as in call it. And he is asking questions to the person who does work at the cafe. As later on into that day, further on into the night, after it closes, the owner does go to walk home. Midoriya ambushing them, pulling them into an alleyway and holding his hand over their mouth, so as to not allow them to scream. As soon as they don't try and defend themselves or react and are just terrified, Midoriya has an idea that this is just a regular human. Before at least getting a bit closer and taking a sniff. Blood, of course. I know you're a ghoul. You can drop it. Drop the act, now. The person, someone just stopping their little resistance and stopping themselves from crying more. But Ori just saying that he's looking for information. And they might know something. If they give him something, he will leave. And not hurt them. If they don't, then they will be his latest meal. In fact, he does feel a bit hungry. Especially since that crap you serve here it doesn't even really classify as food. If I could taste it, it'd probably be shit. Now. Midoriya lets go of them, and the person doesn't say a single word. Someone just telling Midoriya this, this, and this, along with that and that. Things Midoriya already knows. One of the people he's talked with was a squealer. And boy, did they give him a list, and he's been checking it twice. Finding out who's naughty and who's nice. So far, no one has been nice, pointing fingers at each other. As the man continues rambling, Midoriya uses his Kokaku. As soon as he deploys it, he immediately slashes the man across the face, deep enough in killing him, as his body does fall to the ground, and Midoriya begins to feed before he does have to run off. Now, with that being said, he does begin to talk with a few more people, doing this for the entire night. Tonight's latest kill count, five ghouls, four of which were feasted on, and show signs of being cannibalized. Now, some of their organs were also missing, in fact, I believe it to be the RC sack. So that is at least very weird and odd. Now, with that being said, today Midoriya is going to another cafe and beginning to explore a bit further. He's gotten at least a bit more information and he is trying to share it and talk with Momo as she tells him that she really won't be able to talk to him right now. She's in the middle of hero class, and she does need to continue on with this. So, she'll talk to him later. As she does go to hang up the phone. Bakugo interrupting by someone just shouting villains as loud as she can. Momo then running into the USJ and the call being dropped. 
That's kind of concerning Midoriya. As he closes the laptop he has in front of him, puts it into his bag, and then runs off. As soon as he runs into an alleyway, he immediately puts on the mask, and begins to run across the rooftops at very high speeds. Very few people able to see him, as Midori is almost moving faster than the human eye. In fact, some people only saw a blur, while other heroes did see something else. The mask covering his face, that's a giveaway. One part of the hero law is the fact that ghouls are the only ones who wear masks. Some heroes can do it. However, that is only if their costume is distinct. If your costume is something, say, like a suit, yeah. You cannot wear a mask, especially if the mask is the same color. However, if you are a very noticeable hero, you do have a bit more variety. Everyone kind of hates that law. Now, there is a reported sighting of this school heading straight for UA. As soon as Midoriya arrives on the property, the CCG is called, since he did trigger, well, their villain protocols, causing Class 1B to 1 well, every other student course, basically, to go f to freak out. As Midoriya is on his way to the USJ. Whenever he does get there, he does try and open up and smash through the cement wall. That's not working. Before, he begins to by just using his kagune and stabbing into the cement, climbing upwards, and eventually smashing through the very top roof. Everyone heard glass shatter and break, and it was a bit of cause for concern, especially because of the thing that landed inside. Midoriya lands directly in front of the staircase, as he does look up and begin to look around. Everyone seeing the image in, in front of you all right now. As it's a bit odd. This ghoul, why is he here? Why is there even a ghoul here in the first place? Now, Mr. Aizawa does try to attack and take down Midoriya. Midoriya quickly moving backwards and kicking him directly upwards at his wrist. Mr. Aizawa, his hand and wrist breaking. Midoriya then picking up the knife and turning around, tossing it directly at the villains as he runs in to attack them. Everyone a bit confused, as Aizawa is trying to at least capture him and take him down. This is beyond his jurisdiction, but hey, he'll accept whatever punishment they give him later. He's trying to take down the ghoul and the villains. The ghoul quickly ripping through that scarf, along with using his other Kagune. As soon as he realizes it's a chimera, yeah, he does try and back off and gain some distance. Especially because no one's really seen a chimera like this. Midoriya blasting into and destroying the wave of villains in front of him, as Shigaraki summons the Nomu. A lot of people shouting for Momo to use her super strength and to help out, along with Bakugo rushing forwards in a heavily armored form of the hero outfit, bigger and bulkier as to hide the feminine features. Now, with that being said, she blasts forwards, along with Todoroki at least trying to tell everyone to stay calm, and that they need to help out, and stay together. Yeah. Ida is running around, currently trying to help out everyone. And Midoriya has busted his way through about half of the villains. As everyone is staring at him. 
wondering why a ghoul is helping, let alone why it is even here. Now, well, Midoriya, he does actually rush in, whenever he does see the Nomu. Do you really think that we can beat that thing? I'm pretty sure. Why? Because it's right behind us. Midoriya ducking downwards and seeing the Nomu's hand directly over it, as he shoots out his Kagune once more, blasting a hole directly through the back of the Nomu as he rips it up in two. As soon as that does happen, he does turn around and look down at it, watching as he begins to regenerate. Shigaraki just saying that the monster will fight another monster. So, you think that you can take that thing down? It was made to kill All Might. And it can simply kill a ghoul. Ha. Huh. You talk too much. Now, Midoriya turns back around. And he directly throws a spike into the Nomu's leg. As he begins to so much scream out and try and attack Midoriya more. Midoriya fighting back its regeneration, along with actually fighting it more brutally. Anytime the Nomu grabs something, Midoriya either rips it off, or simply gets that layer of skin gone. Now, Aizawa is also trying to help, trying to take down this thing. The ghoul might be on their side, but hey, he'll deal with that later. Now, Momo also does try and rush in, along with some of the students, trying to help. As Kaminari blasts 1 million volts at it. Not really effective. And Momo does rush in and try to attack, along with Bakugo. Her just blasting off explosions over and over and over again. Midoriya is working on piercing through its body and most of its joints. As to slow it down. The thing is faster than him. However, it doesn't have a brain. A brain, that's it. As he does throw a spike directly upwards, blasting it in that direction. Class 1A having to dodge it. And, well, Katsuki, she just blasts upwards into the air. The suit might not be able to sustain it for very long, but it can boost her in certain directions. Now, with that being said, more ghouls do arrive, basically running from the rooftops, as Midoriya throws the spike upwards into its brain, and the Nomu falls backwards, dying. Now, that is whenever All Might and a few of the heroes do burst in, along with the CCG, as they watch Midoriya begin to feast on this Nomu, and Midoriya feeling it. He can feel it trying to do something, reacting to him as he's eating it. It is fresh after all. As he begins to coat his face with blood, the CCG immediately rushing in as they try out a new experiment. These suits. I'm not sure exactly what they were called. I literally could not find it. Anywhere I looked on the Wikipedia or online, I just call these the Kagune suits. Anyways, some of them do rush in, understanding exactly that this is the new ghoul they've been hearing about. As Midoriya simply does one single thing, as soon as he stands up and sees them, some of them running forward and trying to slash into him. Midoriya moving his body and actually just dodging jumping sideways throughout the air, and dodging their slashes. As he kicks one of their weapons downwards, and the other one upwards, before directly doing this, stabbing both of these Kagune's centipedes into, the, into their sides, damaging their suits as they begin to try and fight, off him, fight him off more. The other four that are in the squad begin to attack. Since these suits are experimental, if one fails, well, 
hey, there should be a 1 in 6 chance. So two people can help get the guy out of the suit and at least stabilize him, while the rest can deal with the threat. These things are made to deal with S-Class ghouls. Now, Midoriya is fighting off the CCG, along with the hero Deadshot trying to hit his mark. As soon as Midoriya hears a bullet fly, he immediately dodges and blocks vital, vital areas in his body, beginning to dodge them. As Midoriya begins to succumb to something, he's beginning to feel it as his mask falls off of his face, and his Kakuja emerges. Instead of it just simply wrapping around his arms, it begins to start wrapping around his body, his arms, his legs, and his torso. As soon as he does look up, the CCG realize something. The Three-Eyed Ghoul and the Eye Patch Ghoul are the same person. The one who's been causing so much havoc has simply just been a mere child. Is that correct? As Midoriya rushes in and begins to attack. Now, he goes at blinding speeds. No one even saw him step off. Directly behind a man as he throws his arm outwards, feeling the electricity course around his hand as he stabs straight through one of their chests turning his hand around and ripping out what he can, along with grabbing their quinque and tossing it outwards, using it as a melee weapon and beginning to fight with the other member of the CCG, while dodging gunshots, All Might coming in and trying to fight off this ghoul, as Midoriya simply just tries to dodge him and evade his attacks. Now. Momo is trying to maintain her cover, and it's not very easy, as more and more this is going on. Midoriya, he's simply fighting off All Might along with the other heroes, murdering the members of the CCG as the other ghouls, they themselves join into the fight. All the villains are dead. Almost. And more and more of them are arriving. More heroes and more CCG. Midoriya simply turning into something else. As he begins to mutter off random things. Talking about centipedes in his ears. And scorpions in his mouth. Any form of torture he's endured, he's simply rambling about it being torn apart by a pack of wolves, electrocuted, stabbed, and harvested by the goddamn bastard Ayama, feasting on him like a simple delicacy. All because he is a one-eyed ghoul. Now, All Might, he knows that this ghoul is insane. As the Binkaku or I think it's called that, the tail one, simply emerges from Midoriya's back. The last remaining man standing of the CCG witnessing this. This true chimera is different. As Midoriya begins to blast off spikes for his all might, along with the Kagune on his waist, just beginning to attack. All eight of these arms are overpowering the hero and slashing into his skin, as the tail simply throws itself downwards, and slices away at All Might's left leg, as Midoriya throws a haymaker straight at him, and hits him across the face. Everyone watching as All Might is having trouble against the ghoul, Midoriya's tail if you can call it that, forming into that of a scorpion stinger. And Midoriya simply having his owl mask, if you can call it that, get longer. As his Kagune on his waist forms hands. Midoriya rushing in this time at blinding speeds. Almost outmatching the hero. 
At least that's what a lot of people think. No one knows how fast All Might truly is. And right now he's really being put to the test. He's only able to move on one leg, so he's basically almost a sitting duck. As Midoriya gets sent flying with a punch, All Might sent it directly at him to try and send him flying away. Try and disable or kill the school. As one man in the CCG gets a direct look at Midoriya. Now, they're not sure what to say, trying to radio this in. Their radio, not working. More people than CCG arrive on scene, staring directly at him. As there stands Midoriya, the strange owl seemingly having three Kagunes. He is something unseen before. His face completely frightening everyone as they stare at him. Now, Midoriya simply tells All Might that this fight has been fun, but the other guy's getting bored. He got bored a bit of time ago, so he let me step in. What are you? You're a little unlike anything I've ever seen before. Oh, me. I'm simply more cunning than he is. Torture will do that to someone, you know? Then again, there's many different times. Different types. If I list off everything, we'll be here all day. Have you ever had centipedes put in your he ears, hero? Scorpions in your mouths, your arms and legs harvested over and over again. As a simple meal for other people to eat. Three times a day. Any form of torture you can think of, I've been through. Electrocution, amputation. I've had enough of my own tongue just to get free. In fact, I almost felt free doing so. Losing the last grips on sanity will do that to you. Although I did want to save people like, with a smile. He did at least. I'm perfectly fine ripping them apart and seeing how they put each other back together. The world isn't messed up, Hero. Remember that. It's those of us living in it. We choose to be monsters. However, ghouls didn't. Monsters by circumstance, we are. D you're not making any sense. Am I? I will tell you a secret then. I'm no, I'm not just some random chimera. In fact, I'm not even sure why I have a third one. That shouldn't be possible. So I clearly might be the most dangerous ghoul you've ever faced. But let me just say one thing. Midoriya disappearing from view. Before he's directly behind All Might. Wrapping him up in his Kagune. And binding it with his Kokaku cells. As the Scorpion Stinger faces directly towards All Might. Sticking not even two feet from his mouth. All Might's beginning to feel his time waver, along with Katsuki, as she herself goes rushing in, blasting towards the school. She doesn't want to fight Midoriya, she'll simply stop him, he's clearly lost his mind. Now, with that, Midoriya begins to just whisper something, his backstory, telling All Might that he wanted so desperately to be a hero. Just like he is, he inspired him. But he was born a monster. Something irredeemable in everyone's eyes. When the CCG had an option to make peace with us, they betrayed it. Double crosses and hunt us down like we're animals. So remember, if you're wondering why ghouls don't like being publicized, it's because of that. No one will accept us. Not even me. The Abomination. The Half-Ghoul. Midoriya letting go of All Might, as Katsuki blasts directly into All Might's back. As soon as Midoriya gets up and recovers, he simply just stares at her, as a bullet flies through the back of his shoulder. Midoriya then using his Kagune and making a wall 
a makeshift one. Looking directly at her, her telling him to just simply leave this place, and to not hurt all might. Just get out of here before I have to kill you. Really? Funny. I just wanted to talk with the hero. If I wanted him dead, I wouldn't have hesitated. Goodbye, Katsuki. Midoriya simply running off, jumping upwards into the air, and flying away. That shouldn't be possible. Midoriya launched himself upwards into the air as high as he could, and using his wings, if you can call them that, he began to shake them, flying off at high speeds, like an owl, disappearing into the sky. Everyone confused, along with some of the ghouls left there, simply destroyed and devastated. Momo seeing her people, the ones that she works with. They're all going to be taken into CCG custody. However, she does try and look away, simply walking outside. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he is put on the news. New information. The ghoul that killed hundreds today and tore apart a squad of the CCG. So, it is also revealed that this ghoul is a chimera. However, he may be a mutated version, possibly due to RC absorption. Not much is known. However, some people that were left alive, or eyewitness reports, state these things. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. And yes, I think you all see where this is going now. As I stated in, well, part zero, during Inko's pregnancy, she was given a specialized cocktail. Since giving birth to a half ghoul, yeah, consuming human food would have made her sick. Now, the doctor then used this as an experiment to see what would happen not living long enough to understand the true results. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.